Stuart McCamey is a USDA world authority on tree hoppers. Today, he is leading a team of six world experts deep into the Ecuadorian jungle to study these mysterious animals. Carolina Godoy from Costa Rica is an entomologist and author of the only scientific field guide on tree hoppers. Nick Tatarnik is an evolutionary biologist from Canada. Patrick Landman is the French expedition photographer. Rex Cocroft from the University of Missouri, Columbia, is specialized in the communication of tree hoppers. Joining them is Yves Pacalet, philosopher and writer who has traveled the world with Captain Cousteau. The team is under the watchful eye of Umberto, their guide from the local Warani tribe. They are working in the heart of the National Park of Yasuni, classified a biosphere reserve by UNESCO. It is roughly 180 miles east of Quito, the capital of Ecuador. To survive 40 million years from generation to generation, tree hoppers have developed highly efficient strategies, camouflage, mimicry, but equally as important, community life, alliances with other species, and communication. There have been lots of species that have probably evolved and gone extinct that we'll never have a chance to do, but by investigating this, which is a pretty large group of insects that are under our noses without us even knowing it usually, it helps complete the picture of what's going on in our world and, and how these ecosystems work. This entire colony, it would seem, is being invaded by ants. Reality couldn't be more different. The young nymph tree hoppers have no claws, poison, or defenses, and their wings are not fully developed to fly, to escape from danger. To stay alive in this hostile environment, Many tree hoppers have teamed up with other insects, a strategic evolution that has paid off. And their most sacred allies are ants. What's actually happening here is what we call mutualism. The ants have not launched an all out attack on these tree hoppers, but they're looking for food. And strange as it may sound, these tree hoppers produce a poop that the ants find simply delicious. It's highly rich in sugars and nutrients, and the ants just can't get enough of it. Strategy of alliance number one, food in exchange for protection. Tree hoppers spend much of their lives feeding on the sap of their host plants, the result of which produces a tasty, sweet honeydew and that is the treasure the ants will fight for. It's a sticky compound of water-soluble carbohydrates, amino acids, amines, organic acids, alcohol, auxins, and salts. The excrement is a great source of food for the nearby ants, and it's permanently available. Ants don't want to lose a drop and employ their antennae to stimulate the tree hopper's abdomen, a kind of massage that seems to trigger the release of the Membrosidae's honeydew. Here, the tree hopper plays the role similar to that of the milking cow, and the ant, the dairy farmer. Stewart has discovered that the Azteca ants have gone to a lot of trouble to build an enclosure around this plant's stem. Made up of small pieces of soil, Stewart believes that it is to stop their cattle from escaping. It's amazing how much effort these Azteca ants have gone to build an, uh, a casing around the, around the plant to imprison these tree hoppers. Yeah, it guarantees them a source of honeydew, and the tree hoppers still get to feed. And they might get some protection, but it's probably mostly at the mercy of the ants. Protection, 
precisely what the vulnerable little tree hopper needs most. Mutual ants will protect the eggs, nymphs, and adult tree hoppers from any potential predators that might choose to attack. After all, it is a larder that is well worth defending. But young nymphs are delicious prey to this hungry reduvidae, looking for an opportunity to strike. Just a few centimeters beneath her is a quiet nest of Horiola tree hoppers. An attack on the nest has alerted the soldier ants. They have taken assault on the invader. To save his life, the Reduvidae is forced to flee. And the Horiola go unharmed. The army of ants on permanent patrol is a considerable advantage. The female Bobonota treehopper knows this all too well, for she will abandon her nursery leaving the ants to tend to her eggs and nymphs. A winning strategy of evolution is in the making of alliances, a service in exchange for a service. I'll feed you, you'll protect me. But there are other opportunities. Communication is one of the more subtle solutions. If we can understand each other, we can help each other. Rex Cocroft has been studying the language of treehoppers for the past 15 years, making him the world authority on the subject. The team has accomplished the capture of three heteronotus treehoppers. They are solitary, and such a catch is extremely rare. Not unlike the fictional Dr. Doolittle, Rex is tapping into their secret language. It's somewhere between breaking a code and learning a new language. This is the very first time that anyone has tuned in to the sounds of these heteronotus. Wow, it's a fantastic sound. Nobody's ever heard that sound. You can be sure of that. There's a whole forest full of insects that are signaling using incredible sounds that, that nobody's heard. And people used to think of tree hoppers as pretty, but kind of boring. And when you listen into their vibrational world, you realize that they're extremely communicative. They're monitoring their environment. They're communicating with each other with incredible signals. Strategy of Alliance number two, communication. Just how treetoppers are reading these signals remains a mystery. The microscanner reveals for the very first time the magical, secret beauty of this heteronotus. An inside view of their pronotum structure reveals that it is totally hollow. Researchers know that the abdomen is their communicative tongue, but they are unaware if the pronotum could be in any way used to detect other treehoppers' vibrations. Rex's research has revealed that the treehoppers are speaking to each other by vibrating the plant's tissue. Their hairy legs are hypersensitive, enabling them to receive various signals and they are permanently on patrol. Their feet are equipped with claws that rip into the host plant, ensuring close contact. You can see, look around us, the plants dominate our environment and there are sounds of insects and, and of some other creatures too, traveling through them all the time and we're completely unaware of them. So it's a, it's a completely, undiscovered world out there. <laughs> 